praise the Lord. Another great day of the Lord. We are grateful to be here. I'm very excited to see what God is going to do in your lives today. Whether you are here, whether you are watching the replay, I'm very excited to see what God is going to do in your life today. I tell you, He is a miracle worker. And God wants to touch your life today and transform you. He wants to do a healing in you today. He wants you to be set free. He wants you to be delivered from everything that bounds you. And today's topic is tearing down strongholds. Tearing down idols. There are idols in our lives. An idol is anything you put before God. That's an idol. Some people use money as an idol. Some people make their relationships an idol. Some people make themselves an idol. Others make food an idol. Or how they feel an idol. They can turn lifestyles into an idol. An idol is anything that you put before God is an idol. It's called idolatry and idolatry is sin. And God wants these idols taken down. The Bible says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind and with all your strength. God must be our priority. God must be our number one. It is not okay to put anything before God. It's not okay. But what man is doing today is taking things, taking things and lifting them high up above God and making them a pedestal. The Bible says your God, your belly is your God. Some people make themselves their God. They make money their God. They make drugs or alcohol their God. Relationships their God. How they are feeling their God. They make their desires their God. And they put these things before God. And this is called idolatry. I want to help you identify the idols of your life today. And I want to help you take them down. You see, we are created for divine purpose. And that divine purpose is to do good works that glorify God. But the only way we are going to walk in our divine purpose and do good works that glorify God is if we are living an abundant life. Jesus says, I have come to give you life more abundantly. And the only way we are going to live in that abundant life is if we live a transformed life. You see, good works are an overflow of a transformed life. And life is transformed through Jesus Christ. Good works are an overflow of a new creation. And a new creation comes through Jesus Christ. The Bible says, he who is in Christ is a new creation. The old has gone and the new is here. So in Jesus Christ, the one who took away the sins of the world and the burdens of the world and the sicknesses and the demonic bondages and the witchcraft and everything that is of darkness and crucified these things, in him we become a new creation. The old version of us is cast out. The old version of us is gone. And we become new in Jesus Christ. Otherwise, without Jesus, we will continue to try to please God and we will always fail. Because man and women live in sin. And living in sin, we cannot please God. This is why Jesus Christ took away the sins of the world. So that in Jesus, we can live a sin-free life that pleases God the Father. 
The center of Jesus' message was the kingdom of God. The only thing Jesus ever spoke about was God the Father, God the Father, God the Father. Jesus Christ always pointed people to his Father. To be reconciled with God the Father. But we cannot live this abundant life that overflows with good works that glorify God if we are not being transformed by Jesus. If we are not this living in this new creation that Jesus came and paid the price for. You see, good works are an overflow of the finished work of the cross that is working in you. Without the finished work of the cross working in you, there are no, uh, there is no overflow of good works that glorify God so we can be living and fulfilling our divine purpose. So once again, we are created for divine purpose and that is to, to live a life filled with good works that glorify God. And the only way to do so is if we receive Jesus Christ and live this abundant life that comes from a transformed life. Live this abundant life that comes from being living in the new creation. Living this abundant life that comes from the finished work of the cross. There is no other way about it. And what blocks us from living this life are idols. Let me tell you something about idols. Idols are the cause of spiritual blindness. When we start to accept idols in our life, we make ourselves susceptible to spiritual blindness. You can make money your idol. You can make a relationship your idol. You can make yourself your idol. You can make food your idol. You can make greed your idol. You can make a career your idol, a lifestyle your idol. Anything you put before God is an idol. And it's called idolatry. And idolatry is sin. And idols are the cause of spiritual blindness so that you can no longer see the path God has laid before you so that you can no longer see what God is doing in your life. You can no longer see the move of God because your eyes have moved away from God and you have placed your eyes upon the idol. And so you have become blinded by the very thing that you have placed upon a pedestal. And today it's time to take these idols down and remove this spiritual blindness so that you may see truth. Because idols are the cause of spiritual blindness. It's important to understand that believers are indwelt by the Holy Spirit and the power of Jesus Christ is in you. Please understand what, it, what this means. We are indwelt by the Holy Spirit, which means the Spirit of God, which is the Holy Spirit, lives inside you. Which means you have power over these idols because God has given you the power. There is nothing on this earth that must have power over you because God has given you power through His Holy Spirit living in you, through the sacrifice of Jesus. God has given you the power to tear down every single idol in your life that is separating you from God. Some people make religion their idol. And make everything about religious rituals, religious practices. Putting their traditions and customs before God. 
This again is an idol and it causes spiritual blindness. Religion is very close to being the number one cause of spiritual blindness. Religion. Jesus Christ came not to teach religion because he fought against the religious leaders. The very religious leaders that were studying the scriptures were against Jesus Christ and wanted to kill him. We must not make religion an idol. Jesus Christ came and he spoke against the religious leaders. He called them the blind. He called them foxes. He called them dirty. Jesus Christ came to teach a relationship with God the Father. He did not come to teach religion. He did not come to teach you how to make money. He did not come to teach you how to be happy. He did not come to teach you how to live your best life. He came to teach you a relationship with God the Father. And he said, the only way to God the Father is through me. Because I am the one that took away the sins of the world, paving a way to God. The sacrifice of Jesus is what reconciles us with God. So let's get religion out of the equation. And let's make God the number one priority in our hearts. Please understand that all believers are indwelt by the Holy Spirit. The power of Jesus is in you. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verses 19 through 20 says, do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God? And you are not your own, for you were bought at a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. The Bible here is telling us that the Holy Spirit of God lives in you. The Bible is telling us that your body does not belong to you. It belongs to God. It says because you were purchased at a price. And that price is the blood of Jesus. Jesus paid for your body, for you, with his blood. And so the Bible says glorify God in your body and in your spirit. We are to use our bodies in such a way that glorifies God. We are to use our body in such a way that shows to those outside of us that God is the number one, that he is the one enthroned on our hearts. Anything other than God enthroned on your heart is an idol, and idols cause spiritual blindness. It's important that you know and really understand that you are the temple of God and you have the power to rise above the circumstances of your life. You have the power to rise above the idols that are enthroned on your heart, whether it be a relationship or yourself or food or greed or drugs or alcohol or selfish appetites, selfish ambitions or sexual activities or lust or any, absolutely anything, pride is another one, absolutely anything you put before God, you have the power through the Holy Spirit living in you to tear down these idols and say no. You have the power through the Holy Spirit living in you to tear down the idols of your life and place God as the number one authority in your life. And allow God to sit on the throne of your heart. It's time to say no to the idols. It's time to say no to the things that we put before God. 
They say, come and pray. Let's, let's go and pray. No, I can't. It's time I watch Netflix. That's an idol. They say, let's go and sit in the presence of God. Well, you know I can't because this is the time I uh, answer to my emails. Well, that's an idol. They say, let's go and read the Bible. Well, you know, I can't because this is the time I, 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 I hang out with my mates. Well, that's, they are your idol. And it's time to take everything down. Every idol must come down. Everything in your life that you put before God must come down today. Every person that you place before God must come down today. Every substance that you put before God must come down today. Every part of yourself that you put before God must come down today. Everything that you put before God, money, drugs, alcohol, work, family, career, lifestyle, location, cars, possessions, everything that you put before God must come down today. Your appearance, your name, your reputation must come down today. Nothing must be placed before God. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. The Bible says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added to you. God is promising that when you put him number one in your heart, everything you need, not everything you greed, everything you need will come to you. At the right time, God's timing. But let's not go chasing these things and putting God on the back burner of our lives. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. Do we really understand what this means? I will repeat it and help you understand. Love the Lord your God with all your mind, with all your heart, with all your soul and with all your strength. So love God with all of your mind, with all of your way of thinking. Not just during church, not just Monday and Tuesday, but then the remainder of the week I think my own thoughts of lust, of greed, of envy, of judgment, of depression, of suicidal thoughts. That is not loving God with all your mind. Love the Lord your God with all of your mind. And then it says, love the Lord your God with all your heart. In other words, God must be seated on the throne of your heart. Anything else that is seated on the throne of your heart must come down. Everything, anything else that is seated on the throne of your heart is an idol. And idols create spiritual blindness, and they must come down. Love the Lord your God with all your heart. God is about love. Therefore, love your neighbor. Love your enemy. Love those who hurt you. God is about righteousness. There is no space for unrighteousness in your heart. Otherwise, that is not putting God on the throne of your heart. There must be righteousness in the heart. And anything that is of unrighteousness must be cast down because these two are idols. And then it says, love the Lord your God with all your strength. So some people love God up to this point, but then I'm too tired, so I'm going to do my thing. It's time to pray, but I'm too tired, so I'm just going to watch YouTube. That's an idol. That's putting something before God. That's not loving God with all of your strength. I want to love my enemy, but I'm annoyed. 
but that's not loving God with all of your strength. Because loving God with all of your strength means you will go that extra mile with your enemy to make sure your enemy is loved. To make sure your enemy sees the presence of God in you. Not any other presence. Love the Lord your God with all your mind, with all your heart, and with all your strength. Praise the Lord, Jesus Christ. It is very important that you have the power to do this and to live in this manner because the Holy Spirit lives in you. You have the power to rise above for the idols in your life. You have the power to rise above yourself, to rise above X, Y, Z because the Holy Spirit lives in you. And therefore, you have the power. Please understand that you are seated in authority. Therefore, because you are seated in authority, you have power over the idols in your life to tear them down. Because idols are the cause of spiritual blindness. Everything is spirit. Everything is spiritual. So when we have idols in our life, behind the idol is a spiritual issue. Behind the idol is a spirit. We see some people, for example, putting drugs before God, but those drugs are their idols. The spirit behind drugs is the spirit of addiction. We see other people putting sexual intercourse before God. That too is their idol. The spirit behind this is a sexual spirit, is a spiritual spirit of lust, spirit of seduction. You have to understand the idols in your life are not just idols, there is a spirit behind the idols in your life. If you're putting yourself before God, then you have made yourself an idol. There's a spirit there, it's called the spirit of pride. And so the idols in your life are a spiritual thing. It's a spiritual issue. And today I want to help you to take these idols down. It's time to tear these idols down. So the scales can be moved, removed from your eyes. What was the idol of Apostle Paul? Religion. He was crucifying the people of God. He was murdering, he was killing the people of God. The disciples of Jesus because of religion. Religion is an idol, it causes spiritual blindness. And so the scales fell from the Apostle Paul's eyes and he began to see the truth. But before that he was blinded by the idol, he was blinded by religion. What is the spirit behind religion? The spirit of religion. It's a demon. It is not of God. Religions are not from God. Relationship with God is from God. It's a love relationship. It's a relationship of respect. It is not a relationship of fear. There is a difference. And so you are seated in authority, which means you have authority over these things. Please let's start to understand the power and authority given to us by our Lord Jesus Christ. Ephesians chapter 2 verses 5 through 6 says, God made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Jesus Christ. So the Bible is telling us that we, the believers of Jesus Christ, sit together in the heavenly places in Jesus Christ. The Bible is telling us that we are seated high above principalities. Please understand that we are walking the earth, but we are operating from a heavenly place. We are seated 
in the heavenly places with Jesus Christ. The heavenly places is high above, above principalities which are operating on the lower realm, above power, above might, above names, and above this earthly realm which we walk. So we are seated in the heavenly places in Jesus Christ, which means we have the power of God in us. And because we are seated in the heavenly places, we have power over the idols in our lives. And because you have power over the idols in your life, why do you allow these idols to have power over you? Why do you allow things that are not from God to have power over you? And it could be things that are just and okay, but you still turn them into an idol. You have the power to say no to these idols and today we will cast these idols down. Please understand that Jesus is your source. Everything you need flows from Jesus. Everything you need. He is your never-ending flow of life. Some people turn to drugs because they need peace. They have turned drugs into their idol when their peace can come directly from Jesus. Some people turn to alcohol for confidence. They have turned alcohol into their idol when their confidence can come from Jesus. Some people turn to sexual intercourse for pleasure, turning sexual intercourse into their idol when their pleasure and satisfaction can come from Jesus Christ of Nazareth in a holy way, in a godly way. I want to help you understand the idols of your life today so you can take them down by the power of the Holy Spirit. Some people make medication their idol. If I don't have this medication, then I can't function, then I can't sleep, then I can't. They've made that their idol when Jesus Christ is their only source of healing. Sometimes it's done ignorantly, naively, but it's still an idol. The enemy does not care if you have an idol enthroned on your heart, ignorantly. As long as the idol is there, the enemy is happy, because that idol is causing spiritual blindness. Jesus is your never-ending flow of life. Please understand that anything you need, anything you will ever need, comes directly from Jesus Christ. That's where your peace comes from. That's where your love comes from. That's where your joy comes from. That's where your satisfaction, your healing, your freedom, that's where it all comes from. That's where your knowledge and your wisdom comes from. That's where understanding comes from. That's where power and authority come from. Joy, kindness, goodness, gentleness, self-control, patience, forbearing, it all comes from Jesus Christ. And when we turn to anything else other than Jesus for these things, we turn those things into an idol and it's not okay. Jesus is your source of income. Of income, I said, of power and income. And income. He's your source of income, he's your source of power, he's your source of everything. Because even we live in this world, we need money. Let's speak about money for a moment. We need money. But when we turn to the world for money, what did Satan say to Jesus? If you bow down, I will give you all of these kingdoms. I will give you everything. What did Jesus say? You shall love the Lord, only him shall you serve. He's your source of income also. He's your source of everything. John chapter 7 verse 38. This is Jesus speaking and he says, he who believes in me, as the scriptures have said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Listen to what Jesus said. 
It's very important. He said, whoever believes in me, as the scripture says, then and only then, out of his belly, out, or out of his heart, out of him will flow rivers and rivers and rivers of living water. Water that is alive, water that brings life. So Jesus is saying, when you believe in me, life will flow from within you, outside of you. And this is why Jesus says, I am the life. I am the resurrection. There is no life without him. Jesus is the one who brings spiritual refreshment, spiritual renewal, spiritual life. There is no life without him. He is the one through which your satisfaction comes, your joy comes, your power comes, your guidance comes. Stop looking for satisfaction in worldly ways and start seeking God for your satisfaction. Stop seeking joy in worldly ways and start seeking God for your joy. The Bible says the, jo the, 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 the joy of the Lord is my strength. The Lord is your joy. Stop looking other places for power and for guidance and start seeking God for your power and your guidance. Praise the Lord. Jesus Christ is your never-ending flow of life. Everything you need flows from Him. Seek Him with all your heart. That's why God sent His Son, Jesus. So you can seek him. He was the example. So we can walk like Jesus. And Jesus always leads us to God the Father. Jesus never led us anywhere else apart from God the Father. So when we follow Jesus, when we walk in the examples of Jesus, we will walk in the image of God the Father. Praise the Lord. But the only way we're going to walk, the, walk in this manner is if we tear down the idols of our lives. The idols must come down. God gave you abundant life. He gave you abundant life. And this is why you are heirs to God and co-heirs with Jesus Christ. Do you understand what this means? This is very important. Jesus says, I have come to give you life more abundantly. Which means, Jesus gives you abundant life. This abundant life is because you are heirs to God and call heirs to Jesus Christ. When you receive Jesus into your heart, you become, you become reconciled with God. You receive the Holy Spirit. You enter into the spiritual family of God. You become a child of God. And that's why you receive your inheritance. You are heirs to God and co-heirs with Jesus Christ. Now a part of this inheritance, a part of this abundant life that Jesus Christ is talking about is an abundance of good health. Unless we are living in good health, we are not fully living the abundant life that Jesus is talking about. Another part of that abundant life is 100% freedom from demonic bondages. So unless we are 100% free of demonic bondages, we are not fully walking and living in the abundant life that Jesus is talking about. Another part of that abundant life is an abundance of peace. Unless we are fully walking in peace, we are not fully walking in the abundant life Jesus is talking about. And you need to ask yourself, then what is preventing me from walking this abundant life that Jesus is talking about? And the answer is idols. Idols. Anything we put before God is an idol. Idols cause spiritual blindness. 
Because you are spiritually blind, you cannot see the abundant life that Jesus has made before you, before your feet. Ask the Holy Spirit to reveal what the idols of your life are. Maybe it's you. Maybe you're the idol of your life. I'm so offended. I'm so hurt. I'm so angry. Well, Jesus says, die to yourself. And unless you die to yourself, then you have made you your idol. Your idol could be sexual relationships. If you even look at a woman with the last, you have already committed that adultery with her in your heart. But if you're put in these sexual relationships before God, you have turned them into idols. Idols are the cause of spiritual blindness. So you will never see the abundant life that Jesus has laid before your feet. Because you are placing idols on the throne of your heart and they are blinding you to the truth. Today we're going to take these idols down in the name of Jesus Christ. Today these idols will come down. Another part of that abundant life that Jesus Christ is talking about is an abundance of peace and joy and love and kindness and goodness and gentleness and self-control. Unless you are living this abundant life, then somewhere the enemy is stealing from you. When you're not fully living the abundant life to its fullest, you're not fully experiencing the kingdom of God to its fullest. Why? Because there are idols in your heart. And these idols must be taken away today. In the name of Jesus, they must be taken away. Thank you, Lord. The only way that we can live a life and fulfill our divine purpose and live a life of good works is if we are living the abundant life that Jesus said. Because these good works are an overflow of the abundant life. Good works are an overflow of the abundant life. The abundant life is an overflow of a transformed life in Jesus. You have to let him transform you. Good works are the overflow of a new creation. He who is in Christ is a new creation. You have to allow him to transform you and allow him to help you see the new creation that you are and stop living the old creation when you are a new creation. The old has gone and the new is here. The abundant life is an overflow of the finished work on the, of the cross that must be in operation in you. But if you're not allowing the finished work of the cross to be fully in operation in you because you are placing idols on your heart, these idols are blinding you, you will never fully understand the finished work of the cross. You will never fully understand the abundant life that Jesus is talking about. You will never fully understand the kingdom of God. So you can live it and experience it to its fullest. Why? Because the idols of your heart are blinding you and they are blocking you from living the abundant life that Jesus came to give you. Are we all on the same page so far? Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. You can never live the abundant life that Jesus Christ came and paid the price for because there are idols sitting on the throne of your heart. These idols have to come down because idols are the cause of spiritual blindness. These idols have to come down so that the scales fall from your eyes and you may see truth. You say to one person, come, let's go and pray this Saturday. We'll pray throughout the night. Oh, I can't. I'm watching Netflix. Well, that Netflix is your idol. And it's causing spiritual blindness to the spiritual things of God. You say to someone, come this Saturday. Let's sit in the presence of God for a few hours and see what God reveals to us, what kind of revelations come to us. Oh, I can't. I'm going out with my mates Saturday night. Well, you've just made your mates your idol. And that, those idols will cause spiritual blindness to the spiritual things of God that God wants to reveal to you. Your friends 
I'm not going to give you revelations. The presence of God will give you revelations. So you're missing out on these spiritual things because of the idols that are blinding you. He said to someone, come, let's go and pray, let's, let's go and read the Bible for a few hours on Saturday and see what God reveals to me in the Word and what God reveals to you in the Word and then let's mix two minds together and see what the Holy Spirit is saying. Oh, I can't, you know, I've been really exhausted this week. I'm going to rest this Saturday. Well, you've just created, you've just turned your rest into an idol. Jesus said to his disciples, stay here, stay here and pray while I go over here. And he came back and he found them sleeping. He said, wake up, can you not pray for an hour? He said, stay and pray. He went and he returned again and he found them sleeping again. He says, wake up. Their sleep was more important. And then we say, well, why can I not see the spiritual things of God? Why can I not hear God so clearly? Why is this person receiving more revelation than I am? I'm a believer too. Maybe because there are idols in your heart. And idols are the cause of spiritual blindness. Anything can be turned into an idol when you put it before God. Whether it's yourself, whether it's your feelings. You can turn your feelings into an idol. Jesus says, forgive them who hurt you. But you hold this unforgiveness in your way, in your heart, because they hurt you. So you've just turned the unforgiveness, you've just turned your feelings, your emotions into an idol before the word of God that says forgive. You can turn money into an idol. God says, my son, my daughter, consecrate. I want to do a big thing in your life. But you allow the fear to sneak in and the worries of this, this world and the deceitful riches of life, which was like the second seed soul in the ground. It sprung up but the deceitful riches of life and the cares and concerns of this world choked to the word. God is saying, consecrate yourself. Isolate yourself. I want to do big things with you. But the deceitful riches of life and the fear that sneaks in and tells you, God won't take care of you. You won't be provided for if you don't do it for yourself. When Abraham said, the Lord will provide. So you've created that money, that fear into an idol. Alcohol can be an idol. Drugs can be an idol. Sexual relationships can be an idol. Food, some people turn food into an idol. Greed. Every time you turn something into an idol, there shall be suffering. There shall be. Some people turn religions into an idol. The religions are such a big idol today that so many religions are fighting against one another. And then we have religions that are an idol, creating idols and graven images. And turning the idols into idols. And worshipping these idols. And praying to these icons, these images, these idols. Again, they're placing these things before God. There shall come a day when my worshippers will worship me in truth and in spirit. Some people turn medication into an idol. I have back pain, but let me not turn to Jesus who is the healer and the deliverer. Let me turn to the medication, the painkillers. You've just turned those painkillers into an idol. Anything you put before God is an idol. Any way you seek for peace other than God is an idol. Any way you seek for love other than God is an idol. Anything you... When you seek these things before God, any way you seek for joy before God is an idol. For understanding, knowledge, wisdom is an idol. God must be your number one. Every day, 
every hour of every day, God was being like, your number one. Some people turn other people into an idol. I love this person, and God is clearly saying that it's not the person I have for you. That's not the person I want you with. Samson and Delilah. Delilah was not for him. And his life ended. Because she became his idol. She was not for him. He put her on the throne of his heart other than God. So, she, so he became spiritually blind because idols are the cause of blindness, spiritual blindness. He became spiritually blind to the point where she was telling him straight up in his face, the Philistines are after you. The Philistines are after you by spiritual blindness he could not see. And he kept allowing her in continuously. And that ended his life. I was not the cause of spiritual blindness. Anything you put before God is an idol. Today I want to help you take these idols down. Help you identify them. And take these idols down in the name of Jesus Christ. Colossians chapter 3 verse 5. Colossians chapter 3 verse 5 says, Put to death whatever belongs to your earthly nature, such as sexual immorality or impure things, impure lusts or evil desires, selfish appetites of your heart or greed. The Bible says these are all idolatry. Anything that is of the flesh, anything that is your desire, greed, impure lusts, your wanting something is all idolatry. Everything we put before God is idolatry. What does the Bible tell us to do? It says put to death. It means they, these things must die. It's not about compromising. It's not about tossing it to the side. It's about taking them down. It's about them being destroyed completely. There is no other way about it. 1 John chapter 5 verse 21. It says, little children, keep yourselves from idols. Keep yourselves from idols. Whose job is it to keep you from idols? It's your job. Because it says, little children, keep yourselves from idols. Do you know why it's your job? Because Jesus Christ has already crucified every idol, giving you the power and authority over every idol. Now it's your job to walk in the finished work of the cross. It is not okay to allow any idol to have power over you. Whether it be greed, lust, the lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, the pride of life, pornography, masturbation, Netflix, social media, people, relationships, drugs, alcohol, work, money, possessions, coveting, jealousy, hate, lying, stealing, anything, anything. It's not okay. It's not okay. They have to come down today in the name of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Idols are the cause of spiritual blindness. What is the solution? Come on, somebody give me the solution. Tear down these idols. These idols must come down. To live the abundant life that Jesus Christ came and paid the price for. Listen to this very carefully now, it's very important. To live, I'm not just saying just to walk today and forget it tomorrow, but to live continuously every day, the abundant life that Jesus Christ came and paid the price for, you have to be obedient to the commands of Jesus. Let me say that again because it's very important. To live the abundant life continuously, 
that Jesus Christ is talking about, you have to be obedient to the commands of Jesus. Only then, and only then, can you experience the fullness of the kingdom of God. So let me say that another way. To experience the fullness of the kingdom of God, you have to obey the commands of Jesus. There's no other way. And what were the commands of Jesus? Love God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength, which means no idols. No idols. What does the Bible say? Put them to death. He said, yeah, but I only have one idol. I've completely cast out every idol, but I only have that one idol. When the enemy wants to get to you, which idol will he use to get to you? That one. Let me tell you this about idols. Everything is spirit. Everything is spiritual. Behind every idol is a spirit. Let me say it differently. Behind every idol is a demon. You cannot drink from the cup of God and the cup of demons at the same time. You cannot serve both, both God and mammon at the same time. This is why the Bible says, put to death these idols. Tear them down, they're not okay. You see, people in, in, in addiction, the spirit, the demon behind that is the spirit of addiction. It's a demon. You see, people making themselves an idol, the spirit behind that, the demon behind that is the spirit of pride. You see people making their lover an idol before God, or well, the spirit behind that is the spirit of lust, the spirit of seduction, the spirit of impure sexual spirits. Every idol has a spirit behind. And when you allow the idol to sit on the throne of your heart, you are allowing the demonic to have so much power in your life, so much say in your life, and then you wonder why, why am I not living this abundant life that Jesus promised? Follow my commands and then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. But start walking in my commands. Tear that idol down. Tear this idol down. Tear that idol down. Love my neighbor. Start walking. The Holy Spirit is always there to lead you. Start walking in the commands of Jesus. So as you are walking in the commands of Jesus, you will see that you are every day more by more experiencing the fullness of the kingdom of God. Experiencing the fullness of the abundant life that Jesus Christ came to give you. But the idols must come down. Are we ready to tear down these idols? Maybe you didn't hear me. Are you ready to tear down these idols? Let's stand up, please. This is a very powerful thing that will happen here today. God will touch your lives today. Allow the Holy Spirit. Allow the Holy Spirit to reveal to you the idols of your life. And when the Holy Spirit reveals to you the idols of your life, do not disregard it and brush it off. And say, yeah, but that song is small. I don't really do that much. I believe you already know the idols of your life. But the Holy Spirit will reveal to you. And the Holy Spirit may reveal one idol or many idols. Allow the Holy Spirit to reveal to you the idols of your life. And then you will renounce them and we will cast them down in the name of Jesus. I'll give you a few moments to begin renouncing the idols of your life. And let's be very serious. This is a serious issue. <coughs> Thank you.
Your idol could be drugs or alcohol. Renounce it. Your idols could be sexual relationship or sexual activity in any form. Renounce it. Your idols could be yourself, putting yourself on a pedestal high above everything, high above God. How you feel, what you want. Renounce that. Your idol could be money or possessions. Renounce. It's not bad to have money or possessions. It's bad when you put the money before God. That's what's bad. Renounce that. Your idol could be Netflix or social media, putting these things before God, renounce that. Your idol could be anything you do to waste time, to pass time, so you are not doing the spiritual things of God, renounce that. Your idol could be your name, your appearance, putting yourself high up, renounce that. Your idol could be religion and religious items, tradition, cultures, putting these things before God. Traditions and cultures are not bad if they are holy, but when you put them before God, it becomes a problem, renounce that. Your idol could be your sleep. Jesus said to his disciples, stay awake and pray three times. But they kept sleeping because they were tired. Is God waking you up sometimes early hours of the morning asking you to pray, but you are too tired, so you choose sleep over the command of God. That's an idol, renounce that. Your idol could be a family member. Jesus says, if you do not put me before mothers, fathers, children, you cannot be my disciple. Maybe God is telling you, follow me. I want to take you to the nations, but a family member is saying no. If you leave, everything is finished. And you decide to follow the commands of the family member rather than God, that's an idol, renounce that. It's time to take these idols down. Have you renounced them? Are you ready to give them up? Are you ready? I mean from the bottom of your heart, are you ready to give up these idols? Are you ready to tear them down? The Bible, there are multiple times in the Bible where they tear down the idols. It was a violent thing. They were tearing them down. Are you ready to tear them down? Are you ready to cast them out? In the name of Jesus Christ, 
Let the idols that you have just renounced be cast down, be cast out of your life in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Let these idols be uprooted from the very depths of your soul and let them be gone with in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I declare that in his mighty name, in his holy name, these idols shall, shall have no more power over you. In Jesus' name. Every spirit attached to these idols and every spirit that came in through any of these doors, I command you, in the name of Jesus, leave out. In Jesus' name. Let every fragment of your soul, every fragment of your soul that was in this prison over here, and another fragment of your soul that was in another prison, and another part of your soul that was in another prison. I command these prison doors be opened now in the name of Jesus. And let, this, let all these fragmented pieces of your soul come together and become healed and become whole in the name of Jesus. Let the light shine in the very depths of your souls. I declare healing. I declare healing from the roots in the name of Jesus. Everything that was causing you to run to these idols, let it be healed now in the name of Jesus. Let there be full restoration in your souls, in the hearts. Every brokenness in the heart, let it be healed now in the name of Jesus. Let healing flow into your bodies in the name of Jesus. <coughs> let healing flow into your souls in the name of Jesus. Let healing flow into your hearts in the name of Jesus. Let healing flow into your minds in the name of Jesus. May your spirits be renewed. Let everything be restored in you in the name of Jesus. Let there be full restoration now in the name of Jesus Christ. Full healing in the name of Jesus. Let every tormenting spirit leave you now in the name of Jesus Christ. Let everything that was hindering you from doing the spiritual things of God and living this abundant life be removed now I command you in the name of Jesus Christ. Leave in Jesus' name. Everything causing spiritual blindness, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ. His eyes must be opened now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Let everything hindering your mind, blocking you from living, from thinking, from the mind of Christ, let it be lifted off of you now in the name of Jesus. God is restoring you. God is touching you. He's touching you right now. A restoration is happening right now. He's making everything whole in you. And he's doing it not on a, a surface level. He's doing this on a deep level. He's doing this on a soul level. The, he's, he's, he's healing the roots deep in you. He's healing the roots. Because if he only fixes the surface level and the roots are still there, they will only reproduce. Jesus Christ is, is he healing, he's restoring the roots deep in you. He's purifying everything in you. And I declare that the purification process is being done in you now in the name of Jesus. You are being purified in the name of Jesus. You are being washed and cleansed in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Freedom in your mind in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, in Jesus' name. Freedom in your mind in the name of Jesus Christ. 
Thank you, Jesus. Freedom. Freedom. Freedom in the name of Jesus. Freedom. In the very depths of your soul, freedom in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let every attachment to darkness be cut now and destroyed in the name of Jesus. I release you. I release you. I release you from every power that is hidden behind these idols. I release you in the name of Jesus. Every enchantment and divination spoken against you, I cancel these words now in the name of Jesus. I cancel them over your life in the name of Jesus. I declare they have no more power over you in Jesus' name. Everything unclean that came in through these idols, I break your power in the name of Jesus and I declare freedom from these things now. Every spirit of oppression must be lifted off of you in the name of Jesus. Does anyone here have a pain in their, in their head, a pain in their bodies? Where? On, on the knees, on the knees. Both of them. I command healing in the name of Jesus Christ. Let this pain leave the knees now in the name of Jesus. I command this pain to leave in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I command every stiffness, every tightness, every pain, leave him in Jesus' name. Amen. Let there be full healing in the name of Jesus. Full restoration in the name of Jesus. Full recovery in the name of Jesus. Amen. What is going on? What is going on? What do you feel? What is going on? The one is clear. It was both of these pain in both knees. One has gone and the other one that remains a little. Sometimes healing happens in layers and that's okay. Let there be full healing in the name of Jesus Christ. Let there be full restoration in the name of Jesus. Every pain must leave this man now in Jesus' name. Amen. Complete freedom in the knees. Walk, walk up and down. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. What is happening? Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord Jesus. Does anyone else have pain? Does anyone else have anything in their body that they need freedom from? What is happening in your body? Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the power of Jesus. Everywhere there is pain, the pain must leave. It's the power of Jesus. Because Jesus Christ crucified your pain on the cross. And so when we're releasing the power of Jesus, the reality of the cross must become manifest in the body and the territory. And this is the power of Jesus. 
Thank him and praise him for what he has done in your lives today. And do not permit the enemy to come and tell you that nothing happened. And you may be tested. Do not allow the enemy to come and steal from you what God has done in your life today. He has done a big thing in your life today on a soul level, on a deep level. And some manifestations might be shown quickly and some might show some time. But these idols have been cast down and it's time to put God on the throne of your heart. Let's take a moment to surrender and speak to God and ask Him to come and sit on the throne of our hearts. Speak with Him. Speak in tongues if you want, but speak with Him and ask Him to come and sit on the throne of your heart. And repent for allowing His idols in your heart and thank Him for taking His idols down. And then ask Him to come and sit on the throne of your heart. Tell Him, Father, the seat of the heart is only for you. Come and sit on the throne of my heart. I give you this position. Help me to live for you. Help me to love you with all my heart, all my mind, all my strength. Invite Him to sit on the throne of your heart. If you have already been saved, then Jesus lives in you. But it's your job to put him, it's your job to put him on the throne of your heart. Allow him to sit, welcome him. Come in dear Lord Jesus, speak to him and tell him, come and sit on the throne of my heart. The seat belongs to you. My heart belongs to you. I give you my heart. I give you my heart and give me your heart. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's pray and close. Let's take a moment to praise God and surrender to Him. Amen. Jesus for what you have done here today. Thank you for delivering your people and thank you for casting down these idols. Thank you for your presence that is with us. Thank you for your love. Thank you that you are always faithful and true. I pray that you help these people and even those watching the replay Help them to walk in their divine purpose. Help them to walk in a way that proves their love for you. Help them to live a life without idols. Strengthen them. May the hand of God be upon them. May you bear good fruit for the kingdom of God. As of today, you shall walk an abundant life with God. In the name of Jesus Christ, Amen.